OK Oscar fans. If you want to win your office pool for best predictions, you got to get all those tricky categories in the crafts and animated short and all that. How do you do it? We've got the geniuses here. We've got the staff editors of Gold Derby, including Marcus Dixon, our senior editor, and Chris Beecham, our managing editor. And I want to start with uh, what I think is one of the most intriguing races at the Oscars this year, and it's Best Foreign Film. If you look at the odds of Gold Derby, uh, Tony Erdman is the overwhelming favorite mm -hmm. to win there. But you've got a different theory. Yes, I mean, we're going to see politics play a huge role at the Oscars, just like we did the SAG Awards last week and the Golden Globes with Meryl Streep. And I think that will come into play with the best foreign language category. I think the poor Iranian director who can't come to America because he's banned by President Trump. Of the, of the salesman. Yes, will help his movie uh, win over the predicted frontrunner, which is Tony Erdmann from Germany. Um, and also the salesman is available to stream online, which is, which is a huge benefit because that means every, you, you don't have to put it a DVD that way. You just go to your smart TV, click on, is it Netflix, and, and start watching. I think watching. these voters are knowledgeable <laughs> enough to, to <laughs> stream no, anything. But they're, they're watching more the more. news. More and, more. and this director who won years ago for a separation uh, and made history for Iran actually winning a Best Foreign Film has been very vocal saying, look, even if tr Donald Trump lifts the ban on immigrants I, and suddenly I'm allowed to go, I'm not going as a protest vote. Now, we have seen at the Golden Globes Meryl Streep stand up as the liberal firebrand voice of Hollywood taking on Washington, D.C., and we certainly saw it at the SAG Awards, where night after uh, category after category, all night long, there were denunciations from the stage. Even Ashton Washington. Kutcher had something to say. That's <laughs> right. He wasn't even in comp competition. But so you have to ask yourself, certainly that's going to happen in acceptance speeches at the Oscars, but where is it going to play out on the awards front? If it's going to be all la la land all night, where could we see a difference, and I think this is such an interesting idea that Marcus has. Chris and I are both going to steal his prediction, right? Well, I had it before nominations, oh, okay. before all, all right. this happened. Well, I'll tell you why. Tom O'Brien, one of our contributors who lives here, went to a festival, saw eight of the nine foreign language. So he was doing an article for me. Sure that, but, and, and when he got to Tony Erdman, his two words to me on the phone, he said, German comedy. He said, <laughs> that is not a good combination. He Ooh, said, I don't think it's winning. It's not a laugh and this is before all this happened. He said, go with the salesman. So I went with, I started predicting that even before. So this is um, even going to help it more in your eyes. Even more, I think, <laughs> even based on content. But I'm going to tell you something. This director is very smart. I mean, he's going to keep saying that he's not coming, and here's the reason why, until the ballots are closed. <laughs> and then suddenly he's going to become available, because what better stage should he win to be on to say what he wants to say? Oh, that's true. That's true. But he's not going to admit to that till the voting's over. Best <laughs> animated feature, uh, Chris. Let's talk about one of your theories in the animated short category. And that was last year when these are the toughest things, animated, short, live action. What do you pick, right? And last year, Chris had an insight where he said, you know what? The animal usually wins. Go with the cute animal. Go with the cute animal. And it was the bear last year. Two years ago, it was the dog in, in animated short. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, when we look at animated feature, Zootopia looks like the, the inevitable winner there. It just won the PGA Award. Could Kubo and the Two Strings take it down? I think it could. Be, I have Zootopia out front, but here's my theory, and that is Kubo is male-centric. It's about a little warrior boy. It has snob appeal because it's Japanese anime and all of that. And it's very, very pretentious. It's a lovely film. Mm -hmm. uh, Zootopia has its animals and a boy-girl combo there. Could your animal theory play out there? I, I think Zootopia is going to win, which is animal-based. But I don't think it's, in this particular case, for that reason, it certainly won't hurt. It's just one everywhere. I mean, it's, it, sometimes we get a year like uh, Brave versus Wreck-It Ralph where they seem to trade off wins at every ceremony. This year, it just feels, I mean, don't, don't overthink the easier categories, I think. <laughs> okay. I mean, we don't, every category is not easy this year. So I think Zootopia's got this one done. Although my favorite animated film of the year, Sausage Party, was completely snubbed. Shame <laughs> on what an Academy. outrage, right. <laughs> so, uh, Marcus, what other predictions do you have below the line that, that we need to discuss here to make sure uh, Gold Derby fans get the predictions right? Well, last year I got those sound ones wrong. I got sound editing and sound mixing wrong. I went with The Revenant instead of uh, Mad Max, which went on to win six awards. Um, so th they usually match up, not all the time, but they usually match up. And if that's the case, we all know sound mixing is going to La La Land. So 
I'm struggling on sound editing what to do there. If, if I'm just going to match it up and go La La Land for both, or if maybe I'll pick Arrival, which, which created all these new sounds for the spaceship and the, the aliens, or maybe Hacksaw Ridge, which, had, which was the loudest film. It had all the, the bullets and the bombs and everything. Do you so, think that helps La La Land in a way? Because we've also had a theory over the years of when you want to take down a front runner or a perceived front runner, you usually need one alternative. When you start getting into two alternatives and three viable alternatives, it, it, it suddenly becomes, okay, they're going to kind of split things and go with the one that, that really has the most support. I think I'm predicting Hacksaw right now, but you know, musicals, if you really look back, rarely even get in for sound editing. Right. So the fact that it's even nominated there might they be a signal. always win sound mixing. Right. They uh, whiplash a, music, a film with music one recently, and Dream Girls and all, they always win sound mixing. But the sound editing is a problem here because Hacksaw currently leads in the predictions of the experts, probably because it is the loudest movie and the loudest movie tends to win. But here's where sweet voting comes in, and this is very important. Look what happened last year. Mad Max won both of them. Look at previous years where you have Hugo and you have Gravity win both. Sometimes in the Oscar voters' mind, they go, sound mixing, sound and That sounds the same to me. Right. They and, don't and, know the difference. Right. And, it, and, they, and they both go that way. So if this is a big la-la sweep, this is where we could see a profound difference from what the experts are saying. Mm -hmm. Well, another category that really interests me, because typically if you're really not sure, you go with, uh, if there's an Oscar Best Picture nominee in a category, you go with that. Right. So I, I was just assuming that Arrival would get in for visual effects. Oh, it did not, me. surprisingly. So it got eight other nominations. So there's no Best Picture nominee in visual effects. I think it's going to be Jungle Book. It was an amazing movie to watch visually. But, I mean, could it be Rogue One? You know, could it be something, you know, Dr. Strong? I walked out of Doctor Strange and said, that's some of the best visual effects I've right. ever seen in my life. They, so, owe, they owe Star Wars an award. It should have won last year for visual effects, but Ex Machina won. And you know, the year Interstellar won visual effects, there were no Best Picture nominees in the nomination films. And, and last year we had like three. Right. And no, none of them won. And the Interstellar year, I remember saying to someone, it was on a slugfest, I said, which of these five feels like a Best Picture? Mm. And Interstellar was the one that felt like. So this year, I guess Jungle Book would be the one that, that most feels like a Best Picture novel. Mm. A lot oh. of people thought it would get in, including someone in, in this building here. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> so that one, that one I think is a little, we don't have La La Land to fall back on, thankfully. Uh, I mean, I love the movie, but it didn't belong in visual effects. Um, I think so many of the other ones just seem so solid for La La Land, don't they? Cinematography, mm. art direction. Uh, we talked about costume design on the other Film one. Film editing almost always goes with best picture, mm -hmm. but here it's up against Hacksaw, and normally the most jumpy camera thing tends to win. So you can't say that um, Lala's death. I'll tell you what, though, without giving anything away, the ending section of the movie is the most talked about section of the entire movie. And it's a, what, La -La, you're saying? A, 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 it's a very edited um, uh, montage of, of lots of different things. So, and this man, uh, Tom Cross, just won for Whiplash with Damien Giselle a couple of years ago. Mm. So he's already a winner in this category. Um, what about score and song? Is that La La Land for yeah, both? Can City I, of, of, of Stars? The problem with uh, the song race is that the wrong, the wrong song is out front, and that is uh, City of Stars is the one that, you know, that kind of runs through your head, I think, personally, in an annoying way. I think the other song, Audition, is the one that, that is so catchy and deserves to be immortalized. But you know, when I was, you were really young, but I was like in college, and every, I always wondered, before we were ever a prediction site, I always wondered why the, the worst song from Beauty and the Beast won, you know, the title song, because it was so simple for them to remember, other than like Be Our Guest, which was the big spectacular. Or uh, on Aladdin, the, uh, the Robin Williams' Friend Like Me, the fun song doesn't win, but the, the, the boring, Lion King, the boring song wins, not that big opening number, you know, with all the animals come together. Uh, so I don't know why that is, that they just go the, 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 the easiest route. Well, yeah, it is. City of Stars, La La Land, it, it, they just make a mental connection there. We heard, you know, City of Stars play seven times at the Golden Globes because every time the movie <laughs> won, it played. So that helps get into these voters' minds. And when they're looking at the ballot and they see City of Stars, that's the one they can hum. That's the one they know by heart. They, no it was one can sort of the theme audition. of the movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
all right, these little shorts, best uh, live action short, an animated short. How do you predict those? What is your best advice? Well, to I've been our getting two out of three. Sometimes uh, a couple years ago, I got three out of three. I don't have a um, other than the animated short. I usually go with the animal uh, <laughs> if there's an animal in there. I just watch them, and I just I mean, some, often if you have a Holocaust live mm. action short, I mean, go that route unless you have a really good reason not to. They 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 like those. Those really are emotional. Um, it, it's it's really about the storyline for me. What what seems to have an impact. Um, don't necessarily go by just the experts or just the editors or just a particular group with us. I encourage people to watch. They're, they're going to be online. They're going to be available to see. Um, so, iTunes and all of that, right. So uh, the voters, I think, generally do watch those because they're very easily available to them as well. I usually watch all, you know, 15, uh, five in each category. And then I, I pick the one I like the most. If I was a voter, which one would I go with? And I, I usually get two out of three that way. Mm -hmm. I want three out of three, right? I can't steal from I've either one. I never got three out of three on the shorts. It's because you're an idiot. I did a couple of, when I, the year I went 22 out of 24, uh, which is wow. probably, well, of course I'm going to go 24 out of 24 this year, but that. Nah. <laughs> We're going to tattle on ourselves here that if, if you want to steal uh, the best predictions at the site, really forget the experts, really forget us. We have two sets of predictions called the top 24. And I, these are the people who have proved themselves to be really, really good at this among the many, many thousands of people who make predictions at Gold Derby. And how those leagues work is the top 24 are the top 24 people who had the best score last year, advanced to form a team to compete against us and the experts. Uh, and then the top 24 all-stars are the ones who over the last few years have consistently had the best score. Steal from the all-stars, right? That's pretty good advice in general. Mm -hmm. Well, and if Tom has a last minute change on Saturday, steal that too. Because you switched to Spotlight last oh, yes, year yes, yes, on yes. Saturday. Not that we have much doubt on Best Picture, right. but if you see like Tom suddenly on sound editing switching something on Saturday. I have a really passionate uh, reason for it. And I did stand over the two of you. Uh, and right, we right, ignore right, it. And, and I said, really, you got to believe me. You gotta, it all makes sense now. And, uh, well, it, it sure makes sense looking back. Spotlight was the most important of those films. The Revenant, it was a great directorial no, achievement. You know but why? Had, and this is how you have to take into account the voting process at the Oscars. Uh, the reason we've had all these splits between picture and director is that they have two different voting systems. The Oscar voters rank the best pictures, one, two, three, four, five. You just check off best director. In past years, it was a case of where uh, they almost always lined up. But now with two different kinds of things, it, my rationale was, all right, Spotlight, if it's not your number one, it's going to be your number two. But Revenant, if, if it's not number, number one, probably going to be your fourth. Mm -hmm. Do you, you either really like that or you don't? Taking that into consideration, do you, there, there are some La La Land haters, believe it or not. There's some people out there that didn't like the film. Are they going to rank it low just to hurt its chances? chances? Not for Best Picture. I think that would be a factor if, it, if that was true in other races. But I think in this case, don't you agree, Chris, that nothing can take it down? No, nothing has emerged as an alternative to La La Land. Well, we look at all the precursors. Last year was strange because they were all disagreeing on Best Picture. But the, usually the best one, best indicator is PGA, Producers mm -hmm. Guild. And they went with Big Short last year. And as time went on, we knew, we kind of felt like, well, that's not going to win Best Picture. It's either Spotlight or Revenant. So it was like our best, most reliable indicator is not telling us the truth. So where do you go? And then BAFTA, I think, really convinced us that, okay, the Revenant feels like an epic you know, kind of a feel, it had the most and, and we knew it was winning director, yeah. which often does and correspond, actor. Right. right? So it that's why last year was so strange. But most years you're going to see these reliable precursors come come to, come true, mm -hmm. and that's why we know it's going to be La La Land this year in in the in the front runner categories. But in some of these cliffhanger ones, we really don't know. So it's up to you to push aside the BS and figure out for yourself. Try to beat us. Go to Gold Derby, make your predictions. 